Good morning. So last night I was working on a really big project and I never actually got it finished. So I'm still gonna try to do that tonight, but in the interest of not wanting anyone to go without any stories, this is Grandma's morning story. Actually, let's call it lunchtime story. Zippy is the name of this book. This is probably uh, the book I remember more than any in the whole world. And I guess the shape of it kind of tells you how much I love this book. Um, the book is about Zimpy the Chimp. Let me get my glasses on so we can read this together. I hope you all slept well last night. Zippy the Chimp. Zippy was sound asleep. He was dreaming of the time when he used to live in the jungle. For Zippy was just a little chimp, and he dreamed he was sleeping in the treetops with jungle noises all around him. Then there seemed to be a louder noise. Ring! Ring! It went. <gasps> Zippy woke up with a start. He looked all around him. Do you know what it might have been? Well, Zippy looked around and saw he wasn't sleeping in a tree at all, but he was in his own little bed in Lee's house and the loud noise was his own little alarm clock. Zippy turned off the alarm and tumbled out of bed. He felt glad all over that he was living in this big house with Lee and not in a tree. And then he ran into the bathroom and brushed his teeth just the way Lee taught him to. Now, when Lee first found him, Zippy had just come from the jungles in Africa and he was a wee baby chimpanzee. Now, chimpanzee is a very long word, but nowadays everybody just calls it chip for short. Lee took Zippy home with him. He taught Zippy how to stand up straight and walk on only two feet. He taught him to use his hands as boys and girls do. Soon, Zippy could put on his own shoes, dress himself, and he even learned to comb his hair. The little caption on the side says, this shirt does have two sleeves, doesn't it? Because look, one is turned inside out and Zippy can't find it. Well, day by day, Zippy became more and more like a real little boy in everything he did. Here he was on this sunny morning, eating mashed prunes with a spoon and not spilling a bit. Zippy, said Lee, that's fine. Zippy wanted to show Lee that he understood, so he climbed out of his high chair, jumped up and down saying, oh, 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 which meant, I'm glad because you're glad. I hope Lee knew that's what it meant. After breakfast, Zippy always liked to play with blocks. Do any of you have blocks? Zippies are very special blocks because they have beautiful colored pictures on them. He built them up very carefully into a high tower until, uh-oh, Lee put down his paper and looked at him and Zippy would give that big tower a great big push and colored blocks would fly all over the room. Wham! What a lot of fun that was. When Zippy was tired of playing with his blocks, Lee brought out the blackboard. He drew a picture of an animal on it. Do you see the cat? Yeah, Lee was a pretty good drawer. This is a cat, Zippy, said Lee. It is spelled C-A-T. Now Zippy wanted his turn to draw a picture and he drew many lines. And then he looked at Lee as if to say, is that good? And Lee said, that is wonderful, Zippy. And Zippy said, ooh, ooh. Now I have a surprise for you, Zippy, said Lee. He brought out a great big package. Zippy unwrapped it in a hurry. Inside were a cowboy hat, a light blue satin cowboy shirt, and a cowboy belt with a gun. They were just the right size for Zippy. He was so excited that he had to put them on at once, and now he was a rootin' tootin' cowboy. 
Zippy played cowboy until Lee called, come, time for lunch. Zippy had rice with gravy on it just the way he liked it. And after lunch, Lee said, how would you like to take a walk in the park this afternoon? Zippy understood what Lee said perfectly and he ran to get his roller skates. As Lee walked along the path in the park, Zippy skated along beside him. He was still wearing his cowboy shirt and belt and people often stopped to watch him. Zippy and Lee made many friends in that park. Now and then they would stop to feed squirrels peanuts. When they came home from the park, Zippy ran for his little red wagon and then he looked for his animal toys. First, he gave the rabbit a ride, then the teddy bear, then the panda. He put them into his little wagon and pulled them across the kitchen, under the dining room table, through the hall and back to the living room. There was always so much to do at Lee's house, so much fun. And soon it was time for his favorite children's program to come on TV. Zippy loved to watch it. He pulled a chair right up to the set. Now, boys and girls, I want you to look really careful at what this TV looked like. The screen is black and white and look at the big box. Now, this is not just a front. This is gonna go very deep because back in these days, they had tubes that ran the TVs and they were very big. And that's the kind of a TV that I grew up on. There was no remote control either. Everything was done with knobs. So Zippy turned one knob and then another, and then he waited a second and there was his program with all his little television <coughs> friends on it. And now came that big jolly clown. The clown told about a new baby elephant in the circus and he sang a funny song. It was a wonderful show, but Zippy was starting to get hungry again. He was glad when Lee said, let's have dinner in a restaurant tonight. I'll phone Mr. Brown to save us a table. When Lee had finished telephoning, he let Mr. Brown speak to Zippy. Sorry, the book's a little bit torn. Zippy heard the voice coming out of the receiver. He thought Mr. Brown was hiding inside the telephone. He called, ooh, 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 into the phone. My, how Lee laughed. Zippy looking all over, thinking a man must be inside that phone. He didn't really understand telephones. Zippy loved to go out to dinner and he dressed in his very best clothes and off he and Lee went. They sat at a small table. The waiter brought two telephone books to make Zippy's high ch chair higher. Okay, all right, I need to know. Who even knows what a telephone book is? When I was little, I lived in a little town and my telephone book was about this big wide and about, well, about the height of this book. But grandpa lived in the big city and his telephone book, you see that muscle cars book up there? It was about as big as that and it was about this thick. Every single person in the entire city had their name and their phone number in that book. Nowadays, people just take out their cell phone and Google or try to find who they're looking for. But back in my day, we did it all with books. I kind of liked doing that. Oh, before we go on, I'm gonna tell you a funny story. Once grandpa told me him and his friends had an overnight party and they went to the part of the phone book where the Whites lived. There was pages of people with the last name White and they just started calling people and say, is this the White House? And people would be like, yes, because this is where the Whites live. And then they would get the joke and the boys would laugh and laugh because they weren't calling the president. They were calling all the Whites in the phone book. But let's get back to Zippy. So, Zippy felt very grown up and looked at the menu just like Lee did. Lee ordered steak and chocolate ice cream for him. <gasps> Who thinks that sounds like a wonderful dinner? That steak was so good and the chocolate ice cream even better. On the way home in the taxi, Zippy began to yawn and when they reached home, Lee said, 
It's been a long day, Zippy. Come now, I'll tell you a bedtime story. Do you see this place on the globe? Do any of you have globes at home? If so, why don't you look and see if you can find Africa? Because once upon a time in Africa, a little chimp was born. Sippy listened carefully. He almost seemed to say, I know this story is going to be about me. After his bedtime story, Zippy had his bath and then he put on pajamas and climbed into bed. Lee said, you may look at your picture book for 10 minutes, but before 10 minutes had passed, Zippy's head was nodding and the book fell out of his hands. He was falling fast asleep. But the little clock ticked on. See the little clock? That's what clocks looked in my, like in my day. And the clock was waiting to wake Zippy up to start another day. And there's Zippy. And I want you to know, Zippy really was, I saw him on TV shows and things. Lee really did, this is true. Lee really did get this chimp from Africa and raised him like a little boy. And that was so fascinating to me. I hope you enjoyed the story of Zippy. Have a good day. Looks like it's kind of a rainy one, but maybe tomorrow will be sunshine. Goodbye.